Father, I wish that where I am, they will be, so they will see my glory that you gave me from the foundation of the world. My dear people, today is the last Sunday of Easter. And today the main themes that really is running through the readings is the Holy Spirit, that is the promise of Jesus that he will send from the Father, and that Holy Spirit will bring unity. And if you want to see the greatest miracle ever in the church today, is the unity among all Catholics. That although we come from the walk, different walks of life, diversity, we still are one. Because that is the promise of Jesus and also the prayer to the Father. In the first reading today, we have Saint Stephen, the first martyr of the church, who really attacked everything that was the foundation of the Mosaic law. He told them that there is no salvation in observing the law. There is no salvation in their circumcision. There is no salvation in anything that the law is all about. Salvation comes to us in Jesus Christ and him alone. And we see that the Jewish people hearing this were not very happy about it. And so he begi they begin to really get angry at him and their anger so rise to fury that they take him out of the city and they begin to stone him. We know that Stephen prayed for them that God will not have any to do with their fault because what they are doing is because they don't know what they are doing. And we know that Saint Stephen pray for them that they may be forgiven for the acts of martyrdom, of the murder they were making towards him. And so today, Stephen is the first martyr, not only filled with the Holy Spirit, but also for the love that we, he has for the Church of Christ, he also forgive those who are killing him. In the Gospel today, we have a beautiful Gospel that really is, the, is part of the priestly prayer of Jesus at the Last Supper. Jesus knows that he has to go to the Father. And his passion was, a, was something that he has to go through in order that by his death and by his, by, his by his resurrection, he bring reconciliation to the world and the hope and also the promise to every Christian who believe in him. But he was more concerned about those he is going to leave in the world. And so he prayed to the Father. And he said to the Father, as you, Father, is in me, and I am in you. And here he is speaking about the divinity of the, of the Trinity, that although they are distant, they are part of one nature, the divinity. He said, as we are one, I pray that they will be one with us, so that we will be in them, and they will be in us. And that love that they, we have for them will be the love that they have for each other. In fact, their love for each other testify that you have sent me. And so their unity is going to testify to the world that you have sent me. Huh? In how important it is, the unity among Christians, that we testify to the world that Jesus was sent by the Father. And then we go in the second reading today, taking from the book of Revelation when John the evangelist and also the author of the book of Revelation we saw him that he was in this mystery in this vision and there he saw Jesus Jesus as the groom with the bride ready to meet him and why because John is speaking about the parousia he is speaking about the end of time when Jesus will come to meet his bride when Jesus is going to come and reward the bride and how they are, he's going to reward the bride? For what they have accomplished. The bride is all of us. We are the church. And we are going to get from Jesus what we have accomplished. We are going to be given our recompense. And that's why many people say, well, after we die, we will be with Jesus. According to the readings, we are going to be given according to what we have accomplished, what we have earned on the face of the earth. And so, he who is the Alpha and the Omega, as we see on the Paschal candle, Jesus, the beginning and the end, 
these are the first and the last letter of the Greek alphabet, the Alpha and the Omega, the Alpha and the Omega. And Jesus is the one who is the beginning and the end. He is going to come so that he will give to each one of us who are faithful to the end what we have worked with him. Jesus is going to come as he promised in the gospel. Father, I wish that where I am, they also may be. And that's why he said to his disciples, if I was you, I will rejoice that I was going to the Father, because I am going to the Father to prepare a place for you, so that where I am, you also may be. Not now, but when I come back. He is going to come back to take us to the Father. And this is the hope of every Christian. Now when we read all these readings, how can this reading be applied to our life? By virtue of baptism, as we said at the beginning of the Mass, when we sprinkle the holy water on each one of us, it reminds us of our baptism. When for the first time, as we immerse in that water of baptism, and by the words of the celebrant, we were baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. At that very moment, we become part of that union with the Trinity. Later on, and when we were young adults, God sent the Holy Spirit to us by the imposition of the bishop or his delegate to receive the Holy Spirit, to receive the Spirit of God with his gifts, those gifts that strengthen us, that give us courage, that give us wisdom, and even enable us to face the tribulations of life as we walk toward our destination, as we continue to be his witness. That is what confirmation is, that we will witness by our own life, even sometimes in the hardest of times, that we belong to Jesus, the Jesus that the Father has sent. And that's why today Jesus prayed that they may love one another, where there is no love among Christians, there is no God. And where there is no God, there is no Holy Spirit. And there is no Jesus. And that's why the second reading today speaks to us, Come, Lord Jesus, come. Matana. Come, Lord Jesus, come. That is the cry of the church. We, as the bride, we invoke Jesus to come. Because His coming is our glory. His coming is our our fulfillment for what we believed and worked for. So as we come to the celebration of the Mass today, let us pray that that Holy Spirit within us will give us the courage we need to really understand that that Holy Spirit is that unite us together. That Holy Spirit that give us the courage to profess and make Jesus known to the entire world. That Holy Spirit is who give us the courage in time of our hardship that we endure in this life that pass. And also we pray that that Holy Spirit will continue to unite us to the end. Where there is no unity, there is no Holy Spirit, and Christ cannot be found. Why? Because God is love. Where there is love, there is no room for fear, there is no room for hate, there is no room for division. Where there is God, there is only unity. And that's why Jesus today pray very intensively to the Father in that beautiful part of the prayer, we call it the priestly prayer. So wherever I am, I want them to be, so I will share with them the glory that you gave me from the beginning. What glory? The glory of eternal life. The glory that the Father has prepared for his Son and for those that they will believe in the message that the Son has brought from the Father, that message that sanctifies us and make us holy. That message that really make us reach our destination, which is heaven. This is the theme of today's liturgy. As we are continuing this novena of, Christ, of, of, uh, of the Holy Spirit, let us invoke that Holy Spirit who is within us to alert us, to awaken us, so that we continue to work with no, with no fear to make known the message of Jesus, that the Father so loved the world, that gave us his, uh, his Son, that by dying on the cross for us and rise for us 
And now by sitting at the right hand of the Father as we celebrate this past Thursday, we continue to see that his intercession for us will help us to one day achieve our goal, that we who are filled with the Spirit and unite together, we will arrive at our destination where, where he and the Father and the Holy Spirit lives with all the saints and angels who are waiting for us to arrive. God bless.